Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome to another Tough Say So video. I hope you're all well. This is a highly requested video, so thank you so much for the request. And as the title suggests, we're going to be talking about the biggest, the baddest, the boldest trailblazing collective to come out of the UK with a very complex story. And that is... So solid! So if you like me, let me know. Let me in the studio. I got 21 seconds before I'm about to go. But before we get into this video, a very, very quick disclaimer. This video is purely done for entertainment, informational and commentary purposes. It's not to mock anyone. It's not to disrespect anyone. It's purely various information I found on the interwebs put together into one easy to digest video. So as always, we're going to keep it cute. We're going to keep it polite. We're going to keep it respectful. And let's get into the video. So So The Crew are a UK garage, grime and hip hop collective originating from Battersea, London, where majority of the members of the group grew up together. Mega Man is the founder of the collective. Prior to joining the group, he was a part of a singing group called Too Hype Too Young. He also sang in church. In his interview with DJ Vlad, Mega Man revealed that he was asked to be in UK 90s group Ultimate Chaos, but he didn't join. Yeah. They was asking me to be in Ultimate Chaos, some next singing group from my ends that kind of bust before we got big, you know what I mean? And he went into a little more detail on Tricky's Truth Be Told. We already had a singing group before So Solid ever existed. Mm. Before I even thought about badness and streets mm. we had a singing group we were signed to a label independent label my dreams were shattered way before i got into the streets yeah 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 you understand what i'm saying yeah. like they wanted me to be an ultimate chaos and i thought they wanted to sign my group i think some one of them was getting ill one of them got ill and one of them was going to leave the group or one of them had to leave the group and at that time they was looking for somebody else so pauline must have mentioned me they loved it you know, and I thought, rah, they're, they're going to want me. And I brought my group there, my group sang. Oh. Me, Keish, me, Swiss, yeah. Keish, all that we sang. And I thought they loved it, blood. When I came back and they called in for me, I was like, fam, I'm in secondary school these times. Oh. I think I was like 12, 13. And I was like, nah, 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 I don't want it unless, unless like I'm doing it with my, with my people. So I don't oh. want it. You know what I mean? I turned down, turned, turned that down, bro. However, at the age of 16, 17, Mega Man and Face, who later became a member of So Solid, spent approximately four months in prison for attempted murder. Face said in a Channel 4 documentary titled This Is So Solid that whilst in prison, Mega Man told him, No more hanging around on the streets. And when we come out, we're going to do something. I don't know. It might be music. And we're going to make lots of money. And we're going to take a lot of people off the streets. And we're going to keep it up. Both Mega Man and Face were released from prison and found not guilty after the actual perpetrator admitted in court that he was the person who in fact committed the offence. Mega Man confirmed this in his interview with DJ Vlad. So you got arrested, or did you get locked up during that time or no? Yeah, I went to jail a few months. Just a few months? Yeah, four months man. Trial come up quick, not guilty. Oh, you got it. So it was not guilty. Yeah. But did the guy not testify or? Nah, he came to court and all that. Oh, really? So it was me and all that stuff. Okay, but even with him testifying, they found you not guilty. Yeah. That's what's up. After being released, Mega Man began looking for crew members and tracked down his old primary schoolmate, G-Man, who's also a founder and member of the group. The group initially started out with Mega Man as an MC, MC Mac, and PDS as the DJ. Later on, Romeo joined the group as an MC. The group first formed in 1998 and were individually involved with many London pirate stations, one being Supreme FM, and the main station that the group performed on was Delight FM 103.0, making their name with their own show, So Solid Sundays. The So Solid DJs would play dubstep and two-step garage tracks for up to two hours each session. During this time, the group was self-promoting their music as radio stations were not interested. It was not their plan to do the promoting themselves, but they felt that they didn't have a choice. The way out the garage industry was going at a stage in time, like if you weren't in, if you weren't a known figure or if you weren't in with certain club owners, they could make or break you, you get me? So you had to build a situation for yourself. In an interview with The Face, G-Man stated, everyone was happy to pay for it. When we put the first records out, the clubs wanted, we knew there'd be demand for it. In the Channel 4 documentary, This Is So Solid, Romeo explained how he would actually pay to get into raves in order to promote So Solid. Like me personally, I was running into raves, paying money to get into raves and jumping on the stage, taking the mic off of the MC for the matter of two seconds just to promote the name So Solid. In the same documentary, G-Man also explained how he helped to self-promote So Solid. Like driving around in, our, in my own car, selling the records, 30 records to this shop, that shop, SOR, owing me money, whatever. I was just trying to get the records out of it. Lisa Mafia later joined the group and became the first lady of So Solid. Then in the year 2000, the group released the single, Oh No, Sentimental Things. 
This was the track that started to bring attention to the group as it broke the UK underground garage scene and was heavily played in raves. The CD, Oh No Sentimental Things, Dilemma, also included two remixes of the single and an additional single, Dilemma. So so they had their own record label called Paper Money Recordings. We weren't making much money, they were spending a lot of money, but we weren't making a lot of money. And G comes to me and said, yeah, I want to do a label. However, they were later signed to Relentless Records. In this interview with DJ Vlad, Mega Man revealed that the group signed a single deal for the track Oh No Sentimental Things with the label, but not an album deal, and were given £125,000. At this time, there were only six to seven members in the group. How many members at the time? At that time, when I got signed, it was like six, seven. Six, seven. So it was still relatively small compared to what it became later. Yeah, yeah. In the same interview, Mega Man said that the single, Oh No, Sentimental Things, peaked at number 13 on the charts. However, the single was later disqualified from the charts, and here's why. So you put out your single. How good does it do? Uh, it went number 13 on the charts. Okay. Early label, but then it got disqualified from the charts because... um. You know, on a single, like if you put too much songs on it, that that, and you call it different, give it different titles, it then becomes an EP. Mm. Yeah. So, Relentless was early. That was um, I think they were new to the business as well. I'm not sure. Okay. But from that mistake, I would say you're new to the business. Lisa Mafia also confirmed this during her interview on Anything Goes with James English in March 2021. So how did that come about? Because before 21 seconds, you'd already had a top 10 hat, is that right? Yeah, we had, we had Oh No, Sentimental mm -hmm. Things. And unfortunately, we had a record label that weren't not unexperienced, but they made a mistake by putting too many versions of our single on the record and that made it go into the album charts but we, it wasn't an album it was one track and it was loads of different versions and remixes so we didn't chart but we sold we sold ridiculous amount The group later expanded to 19 members and then to approximately over 35 members and consisted of the following MCs Mega Man Romeo Mac Asher D Harvey Scat D, Codeine, JD, Mr. Kira, the Twin MCs, and Dubplate Mex, also producer under the name DPM. The following vocalists and musicians, Lisa Mafia, Cash, Face, Neutrino, Swiss, Money, Tigeress, Thug Angel, The Twins, Squami, Caldeen, The Realist, which consisted of Seth and K1, G-Man, who's also an MC, AM Sniper, Trigger, Mr. Shabs, AC Burrell, D Murder, and Frost. The following DJs, PDS, Oxide, Dan the Man, TW7, Timeless and Statics. And the following producers, Carl Morgan, Synth, Gillard, Mr. C and Double R. I'm sorry if I've missed anyone. But you've got a, a big pool of talented people. <laughs> How did you manage to say, all right, James can write bars, so-and-so can songwrite? They're like, How did you... What was the process? Did you like audition every week for like we someone who's gonna be we on a track? We weren't, we weren't, we weren't like that. What did you do? How did you make sure well, that you were getting, you know? What happened is that MCs had to become artists. Yeah. DJs had to become producers. Yeah. And girls who were pretty around us had to be able to sing a Sing note. something, yeah. Mega Man's logic behind recruiting a lot of people to the group was that the So Solid name could spread a lot quicker. According to the book 1000 UK Number One Hits, So Solid crew were often referred to as the UK's answer to the US hip hop collective, the Wu Tang Clan. In an article on Voice Online in September 2013, it was revealed that founding members Mega Man and G Man were the only members of the collective that was signed to a label. However, every member of the crew was funded by the label, which is unheard of. Mega Man said, Two people, me and G Man, was signed to a record label in order for the crew to provide an album. So the business side of So Solid was me and G-Man. And in the end, it was the label and the publishers that were looking after everyone else in the crew who weren't even signed to them. That's unheard of. A label won't fork out money for someone who they don't have a contract with, crew or no crew. It just doesn't happen, but it happened for us. In August 2001, So Solid landed at number one on the UK singles chart with their massive hit single, 21 Seconds, selling over 100,000 copies in its first week. 21 Seconds spent a total of one week at the number one spot. However, the single spent a total of 18 weeks on the chart. The single also peaked at number 45 in the Netherlands, spending a total of seven weeks on the chart. In a Red Bull Music Academy blog, it was noted that So Solid's label boss at Relentless, Shabs Job and Putra, recalled the methodical way that 21 Seconds became a mega hit. They said, how long do you want it? We said 3.5 to four minutes. They said, fine. So they literally took a calculator and divided the time by the number of MCs. It was a set of verses, all verses, 
and it went out on white label as a set of verses with no chorus. Slowly but surely as they PA'd it, it was getting bigger, but we didn't have a radio edit. There were nine of them on it. I did this radio edit one night and put the chorus on. And I then phoned up Mega Man and said, look, I've done this edit, but you're not going to like it because I've taken you off it. Seeing the bigger picture for the crew, Mega Man didn't object and the radio edit and its chorus made them superstars. Okay guys, I'm not gonna lie, I was slightly confused because at the end of the quote, it said that Mega Man was taken off the radio edit. But as we all know, he actually started 21 seconds. So I could only assume that the edit that they're talking about might be an earlier edit where he was completely taken off it. And then maybe he was added on last minute or later on. I don't know, just a thought. In the Channel 4 documentary, G-Man explained that the reason behind the MCs having only 21 seconds to literally say what they gotta say was so that we could be introduced to the other MCs of So Solid crew, as people who knew of So Solid only knew of Mega Man, Romeo and Lisa Mafia because of the track Oh No Sentimental Things. In his interview with DJ Target from BBC Radio 1 Extra in 2017, Mega Man revealed that So Solid had to set up a premiere of 21 seconds because nobody liked the song, radio didn't want to play it, DJs were against it and they had to invite everyone in the music industry, including rival record labels, to attend a red carpet event to watch the premiere of 21 Seconds. Mega Man described this as a defining moment. In 2017, Mega Man told The Guardian that the label was supporting members who weren't signed to them, paying for cars, food and clothing. Sometimes the label said they weren't going to pay for something, but I was like, you are, or I'm not leaving my house. I was looking at the Puff Daddies and rappers of the world who were doing million dollar videos and I didn't want to be any less cheesy than them. And my daughter used to come home very upset and stuff because uh, the kids used to say, because she features on the 21 seconds at the beginning, she's the child that says, ha ha ha. <laughs> In March 2001, an incident occurred at a venue in Luton, whereby Marcus Hall, a teenager, was repeatedly stabbed and beaten to death following one of So Solid's gigs. The unfortunate death had nothing to do with the collective. In November 2001, whilst the group were performing on stage at the London Astoria nightclub, shots were fired in the crowd. There are reports that say that the incident happened during Romeo's birthday party, whilst other reports say that the incident occurred during the group's performance. It may be that the group performed on stage at Romeo's birthday, but I don't know. There are also some reports which say that the shooting occurred outside the London Astoria. According to an enemy article in December 2001, the attack left two men hospitalised with leg wounds after being shot during the early hours of November 1st. In the Channel 4 documentary, Lisa Mafia said that the group learned of what happened the night before the next day. We heard there was a shooting, there was this, there was that, there was this, there was that, fights, whatever. Guy, a guy was really badly injured and I just couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. I literally thought that people were coming to get us on the stage, <laughs> you know, and I didn't even think of it being a shooting or, or something happened in the crowd. I just thought people were happy to see us and got a bit excited and tried to get on the stage. That's what I thought it was until the next day. And the next day is when all of us realised that there was a shooting, that there was this, there was that, you know. Face's version of events matched with Lisa's as he said that when the gun was let off, the group left the stage and exited the venue via the back, jumped in their cars and went home. However, the next day, the newspapers were basically blaming So Solid for the incident. You hear a gunshot go off and we just go out the back door, find our cars and go home. But next day in the papers, plow, So Solid. I can't believe they could even dream of blaming us for that. I mean, we was on stage performing. As a result of the incident, So Solid was stopped from performing around the UK and their tour was cancelled completely due to the increase in negative press. The media constantly associated the group with gun terror. After the cancellation of their national tour, the group became the focus of growing criticism in the press, being associated with violence and gun crime. However, this did not stop the group and in November 2001, they answered the press and the critics with the release of their debut album, They Don't Know. At the same time, the group released their second single of the same name. They don't know about my crew. They don't know what I do. Which peaked at number three on the UK singles charts spent a total of 11 weeks on the chart. In an enemy article in December 2001, So Solid slammed the police, blaming them for the dramatic collapse of the collective's UK tour. Speaking exclusively to Enemy, one of the members, Oxide, said that the police know damn right that the group had nothing to do with the shootings at their London Astoria show and insisted, they're maybe not good enough, so they're trying to blame it on us. He went on to say, 
When the clubs were talking to the police, saying we were going to play on a night, they were told you need to pay for extra policing to be ready in case anything happens. The tickets were selling, the promoters were happy, it's just the police, they just don't really want us in the clubs. A spokesperson for the University of East Anglia Students' Union, where the tour was to have started, backed up Oxide's claim and said, The police did say they would have to lay on officers and someone would have to pay for them. I can never remember any event here when that has happened in recent times. The only time I believe it had happened in the past was on the Sex Pistols tour. In December 2001, the group's album They Don't Know peaked at number 6 on the UK Albums Chart, spending a staggering 23 weeks on the chart. The album was certified platinum. Also in 2001, a track from the album Envy, They Don't Know Remix, which featured UK MC Ms Dynamite and only Mega Man, Asha D and the twins from So Solid began making a buzz. It seems that this was after it was released as a remix to They Don't Know in the same year, according to Discogs.com. Although the track did not make it mainstream, Envy is regarded as one of the best garage tracks of all time. The group not only performed at the 2001 MOBA Awards, but they also won the award for Best UK Garage and the award for Best Newcomer. The Best UK Garage Act is, and I love them, so solid. You have 21 seconds to get up here. The group continued to perform on Pirate Radio until Christmas Day 2001, where the group performed their last Sunday show on Delight FM. Also in December 2001, So Solid released a compilation album titled Fuck It. Then in January 2002, the group released their third single, Haters, which peaked at number 8 on the UK singles chart, spending a total of 7 weeks on the chart. And in April 2002, So Solid released another single, Ride With Us which peaked at number 19 on the UK singles chart, spent a total of six weeks on the chart. Also in 2002, So Solid won the award for best video for 21 seconds at the 2002 Brit Awards. They also performed at the award show. And the winner is 21 seconds. So However, an incident occurred backstage whereby Brian McFadden, who was at the time a member of Irish boy band Westlife, reportedly threw a bottle of water over all members of the collective backstage at the 2002 Brit Awards. Apparently, he consumed two bottles of vodka and eight cans of Red Bull on the night, according to the Sun newspapers. In his interview with Time Out magazine in October 2020, Ashley Waters, aka Asher D, explained what really happened that night at the 2002 Brit Awards. He said, Everyone had been drinking. We had to walk past this table to collect this award. And you can imagine like 35 of us walking in our levers, gassed up with our bandanas in that. Brian McFadden, who was sat with his then girlfriend, Kerry Cotona from the girl group Atomic Kitten, began heckling the crew, repeatedly saying, you don't deserve it. Next thing, one of our guys says, you know, shut up. And then someone throws champagne and then someone throws a glass and then it becomes this mass brawl. The group were also the subject of a Channel 4 television documentary titled This Is So Solid, as mentioned earlier, which was released in 2002. In the documentary, it was mentioned that the reason why So Solid were singled out for so much press attention is that they brought elements of America's hip-hop culture to the UK. In the US, music reached out of the ghetto and captured Middle America. In the UK, So Solid reached out of inner city streets and captivated kids in Middle England. And you're seeing posh kids. Yeah, I'm talking posh kids saying, yeah, I'm feeling you guys, man. You guys are wicked and... Because I said from early, if you put us around better things, you'll hear better subjects. Yeah. In his interview with Anything Goes with James English in April 2021, Harvey discussed how he thought Mega was a good businessman. However, at the same time, he had the Easy e Suge Knight, P. Diddy, Jay-Z type of aura whilst handling the group. He also revealed how Mega saw Harvey, Romeo, Asher D and Lisa Mafia as his star players, launched them on the single 21 Seconds, knowing that they were all going to get offered solo deals. Mega signed them to So Solid Recordings and gets 20% off their solo deals. Harvey went on to sign a £250,000 deal with Universal, Romeo signed for £300,000, Lisa signed for £250,000 and Asher D signed for £300,000 before coming to jail. In March 2002, Asher D was sentenced to 18 months in jail for carrying a gun. In the Channel 4 documentary, Lisa Maffey explained that Asha D was still living in the middle of Brixton and was being threatened and being kind of bullied. Face mentioned that Asha D said to him that he was going to prove himself to people one day because he had had enough. He was being threatened, he was being um, kind of bullied. 
he said to me one time is, you know what, I'm going to prove myself to people one day, you know, because he had enough. Like, he just had enough of people, like he's, been, like, he's got cut from here to there, so I to mark myself, you know, so someone did that. But this was not reported in the newspapers. Megaman also said that Ashadi was already getting hate before even being in So Solid, as he was acting in TV programs such as The Bill and Grange Hill. And when he became a member of So Solid, the hate increased. People were breaking into his car, setting his car alight, and his then girlfriend was receiving death threats. However, Ashadi's prison sentence only intensified the media spotlight on the group and added to their notoriety. According to an article on Vice.com, it was this reputation, i.e. Ashadi being in prison for possession of a firearm, that provided justification for the police to ban the collective from performing any shows throughout the country. It was only during the Channel 4 documentary that the group performed in front of an invited crowd. This will be the first time since November 2001. The performance took place in July 2002. Then in the early hours of 2nd January 2003, at a party in Birmingham, two teenagers, Letitia Shakespeare and Charlene Ellis, were shot in a crossfire between rival gangs. In the immediate aftermath, the Labour Culture Minister, Kim Howells, was quick to throw blame at So Solid and said, idiots like the So Solid crew glorifying gun culture and violence. Also, then Home Secretary David Blunkett called the group's lyrics appalling. According to the Red Bull Music Academy article, the politician and broadcaster Trevor Phillips blamed what he called So Solid's gold chain and no brain mentality for an unexplainable double murder in a British city 120 miles away from the crew's home, as if their music's popularity had some kind of ambient influence on the population at large, and the Labour government even sought to censor rap lyrics as a result. In a blog post on thequietest.com, it was noted that Mr. Shabs told The Guardian in 2005 that We were getting compared to people like the Sex Pistols. Now black music in this country is getting bigger. The problem was we were the only ones up there at the time. The government didn't like it. We were made scapegoats. We were in South London, but if something happened in Birmingham, it would be because of us. In an article in The Guardian in April 2005, it was noted that BBC Radio 1 and 1 Extra DJ Russ Kwame believed nothing was that simple, he said. There are complex reasons for the media profile that So Solid attracted. I don't think they deserved everything that was put their way. They made a record that portrayed some urban realities. They then got tarnished with the brush of glamorising those realities. Late in 2003, So Solid released a single Broken Silence. Is it supposed to be like this, like this? Which beat at number 19 on the UK single charts, but in a total of six weeks on the chart. According to Wikipedia, the single Broken Silence spoke out about government prejudice, which the group felt they had faced. In one of the verses, they say, Plus the media, government, tried to blow us, but they can't out the flame or doubt the name. Then in October 2003, the group released the album Second Verse, which peaked at number 70 on the UK albums charts, spending a total of one week on the chart. In his interview on Tricky's Truth Be Told, Mega Man said that the record label they were signed to was concentrating more on British indie group Travis and had spent a lot of money on them, which meant that So Solid's second album didn't get the push it needed. He also said that he wanted to do a double album and had spent a lot of money doing this and getting features from artists such as Khalees and Beanie Man, but they, I believe he was talking about the label, didn't want to do it. Because they had Travis, they had us and all of that and they're spending tons of money on Travis. Our second album didn't push like I wanted to push because I wanted to do a double album. Oh. I spent so much money getting Khalees on a feature and Beanie Man on Garage and all of that sort of stuff. Like I had the Wall remix ready and I had Beard stuff ready, oh. man. And um, they didn't want to do it. In an interview with bbcnews.co.uk in January 2010, Lisa Mafia said that in the past, the group were advised not to speak to the press about incidents like the shooting which occurred outside of Romeo's birthday party. She goes on to say, If we'd been allowed to put over our side of the story, we would have had more longevity. In April 2004, the group released a single, So Grimy, Girl, so grimy love the way you. which peaked at number 62 on the UK single charts, but in a total of one week on the chart. In 2005, producer Carl Morgan was arrested and jailed for murder. In his interview with DJ Vlad, Mega Man said they said he killed him, but he didn't. Carl Morgan got convicted of killing yeah. uh, Colin Scarlett. Yeah, so that they say he killed him, but you don't think that's what happened? No. Nah. Mega Man said that he was also roped into the murder charge. According to an article on digitalspy.com in 2016, it was stated that Mega Man was accused of encouraging fellow member Carl Morgan to murder Colin Scarlett, who was the partner of Carl Morgan's ex-girlfriend, and was in prison for two years. This was due to his first trial ending in a hung jury and was sent back to prison for another year. During his second trial, it was revealed that the police was making up stuff and this was played to the judge who then said that he had no choice but to dismiss the trial. However, Mega Man had his third trial whilst under house arrest and was acquitted in 2016. But Carl Morgan was convicted of murder 
and sentenced to 30 years in prison. Also in the interview, Megaman stated that due to the backlash, there were times where some of the members, even his business partner, which I believe is G-Man, distanced themselves from So Solid, apart from Face, who was safeguarding the brand. After this whole thing is over, is there still a So Solid or is everyone pretty much gone their separate ways? Well, you know, like Lisa, Romeo, Harvey, all of these guys had different backlashes. Even my brother, you know what I mean, had different backlashes and there was different times where they distanced themselves from So Solid and, oh, I'm not So Solid or I don't want to attach themselves to the name and all of that. I've seen majority of my crew members do that. But I'm the only person that's never done that because it's my baby. You know what I mean? Like my business partner done that. But I've never done that because it's my baby. And I've always stood by my brand. And when I came out and I saw no one taking care of the online presence or anything, there was many reasons why. You know what I mean? Family members and, and I expect everybody to listen to their family and closest friends at that time. But when I came out, I just saw that no one was really safeguarding it, apart from Face. Face had one or two things safeguarding it, and I had to just learn everything from scratch. However, in her interview on Anything Goes with James English, Lisa said that it was her management that advised her to say that she was no longer part of So Solid. And before she knew it, there were headlines labelling her as former So Solid, which she did not consent to. So were you thinking, were you trying to break away from it? At any time. No, I didn't. I didn't break away from it. My management at the time said, "This is how. This is how. This is how it was conflict of interest." Because when So Solid started going down with so much stigma, and I was the only one left, now management wanted to back me. Yeah. <laughs> now they're telling me to say, "Say you're not from So Solid." In you know, don't tell no one you're from So Solid. Tell them they had every headline saying former So Solid. All of a sudden, I'm like, who the fuck told them to say that? Because I ain't former. I was there repping still. That is my crew. I'm not going to be called former So Solid and their management's in the background. Yes, you are. Because now So Solid can't be used. Now they want to use me better. In his interview with Anything Goes to James English, Harvey said that during this time, he and Mega had a big fallout, which led to Harvey being the first member to leave So Solid and distanced himself from the group. But then obviously me and Mega had a big fallout. Ain't a mystery to no one. And I was the, f I was the first one to leave. Like I said, he got sent to jail for like the attempted murder. Ash, Ash has gone jail. Obviously, you know, Morgan, our boy, is doing life now. Yeah. I went to see him for the first time. How was it? Four years ago. He's doing very well. And it broke my fucking heart, James. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the first time I've seen him in 13 years. Why was that? Did you just fall out beforehand? Because when I left so solid, I detached myself from everything. In late 2009, So Solid released a single, Since You Went Away, under Mega Man's label, Mega and Cole. In January 2010, the single peaked at number 82 on the UK singles chart, spending a total of one week on the chart. In July 2013, it was reported that the group had been dropped from the lineup for the London's Lovebox Festival, less than a month after they were added. The news emerged after crew member Harvey took to Twitter to say that the reason for this was because another artist didn't want the collective on the same stage as them. However, he later posted that the situation was out of Lovebox's hands and thanked Lovebox for their support. However, it was reported in the Sun newspaper in July 2013 that a spokesperson for Harvey advised that the group were in fact dropped for a different reason. He said, the demand for so-so the crew fans and the number of punters at Lovebox is too much for the venue. The boys do feel victimised slightly, but we are one of four acts who has also been given the same information, so it was an amicable decision. We hope the fans have a safe day and enjoy the show. In a statement, Lovebox organisers denied that any other artists had been involved in scrubbing So Solid Crew from the festival lineup. The decision, they said, was due to circumstances out of our control. According to an article on Factormag.com, in July 2013, it was speculated that if the group weren't removed at the request of another artist or willingly by the Lovebox festival, then it could be a case of police intervention, as the Met Police have a history of cancelling events or requesting artists be dropped from them if they fear violence. Also in 2013, So Solid embarked on their tour in and around London. However, this will be the very last chance for fans to see the crew perform together as a collective after being stopped from performing 10 years ago. <laughs> In October 2013, the group reunited for a special performance at the 2013 Mobile Awards. 
In 2019, the group did a Red Bull Music special studio live where they did a remix to their massive hit 21 Seconds with Toddler T and DJ Q and UK rappers D Double E and Miss Banks. In March 2020, Soso Soli performed at the O2 Forum Kentish Town to mark 21 years in the music business. However, in his interview with Anything Goes with James English in April 2021, Harvey explained how he and Ashley Waters are no longer close, as he feels as though Ashley has distanced himself from So Solid. Harvey also said that Ashley turned up to the March 2020 gig, but refused to perform. I was with him four weeks before, at the So Solid concert that we put on just before the first lockdown, which he turns up, but never performed. No. Hey. Well, there you go. Now you know why. Now, mm. now you. So, so I don't understand why you turned up. Still, probably still want to be part of it, and probably still mess up. It was bizarre. So when I've actually said to Asher at the time, "Yo, Ash," because it was me and Mega's show, I said, "Yo, your your clothes are with the stylist upstairs," and he looked at me and went, "I'm not performing." I went. So I just looked at him and went, "Okay." In his interview with Time Out Magazine in October 2020, Ashley doesn't mention the March 2020 gig. However, he did say that he was supporting the initiative Black Pound Day, founded by his So Solid crewmate, Swiss. In August this year, So Solid performed live for the official 20th anniversary of their hit single, 21 Seconds. So Solid will have to go down in history as the most groundbreaking and trailblazing collective in the British music industry. They not only set the trend, but they are also pioneers who paved the way for a whole generation of UK grime and hip hop artists and changed the face of UK music. They also picked up a number of awards. Smash Hits Awards, PRS Awards, Star Star Awards, Best Writers of the Year, Brit Awards, Mobiles, um, Emma Awards, UMS, UKG. The collective came at a time where garage music, especially mainstream garage, was mainstream friendly. However, so they came on the scene with darker lyrics and their music reflected the difficulties and complications of street life in London, which at the time was very much ignored. Unfortunately, their success was plagued by a lot of negative press and ridicule from the media and the government, as well as some of the members being caught up in illegal activities and or receiving criminal charges. Undoubtedly, 21 Seconds has become an iconic track and the group definitely deserve their flowers for their undeniable contribution to British music. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you've all enjoyed. For those of you who made it this far, thank you so much for sticking around. Don't forget to like the video, share the video, subscribe, comment down below let me know your thoughts and i will see you all in my next video over and out